future of education that is dedicated to leadership, educating leaders for a different future. So let me start by remembering the words of, um, of John Fitzgerald Kennedy, who was saying uh, that leadership and learning are indispensable to one another. So the question that we have to pose ourselves is, are we providing leaders of today with the learning tools, with the learning capacities, with the learning institutions that are required to be an effective leader? And this applies obviously for, to the leaders of today, but, but even more to the leaders of tomorrow the leaders that uh, are shaping themselves as we speak. We heard that in the previous session. Um, and it's true, it's very well what uh, uh, our, our um, friends, and Peter Schlosser in particular said, the fact that when we deal with younger generations, uh, Jan Hans, for sure, this is your case, we are always surprised of how much they are ahead of us, uh, ahead of us in uh, not just in technical capacities, but in thinking, in this system thinking that is definitely needed. So I would say, I mean, at least for my personal experience, that we can be, uh, uh, we, we can be uh, positive. Uh, we can have a positive outlook in terms of the future uh, because we are surrounded by, uh, by generations or, or a new generation for sure of uh, young, skilled uh, individuals, women and men around the world that can become effective leaders. The problem is that the system that we have nowadays is still self-centered is still self-referential, is still a closed system that not, uh, 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 does not allow for young leaders to emerge. Uh, they are trying, they're trying the best, uh, and they do succeed in many cases, but certainly it is an uphill battle. So the question that I think we should pose ourselves is how are we going to help them? How are we going to help them uh, in a society that sometimes does not learn from its own past. Um, maybe some of you remember a, a group, uh, a comedy group, a British comedy group called the Monty Pythons. Uh, they had this uh, surreal, uh, surreal thinking that I loved a lot. A sentence that uh, has been quoted a lot from them, from one of their sketches. Uh, what have the Romans ever done for us? What have the Romans ever done for us? And, and then the answer was, well, you know, uh, they did uh, sanitation, roads, irrigation, education, well, and all the rest. So in the end, uh, it seemed like the Romans did a lot for us. But a lot of uh, contemporary people tend to forget uh, that there is a lot that we learn from history uh, and a lot of mistakes that we also have been committed in history they should not be repeated. So the question is, uh, can we really learn from the past? This is also very important. Or should we, as, it, uh, as someone says, you know, ignore you know, the, what the Romans did, what the Greek did, uh, what the ancient cultures provided to us, and just focus on technical skills? This, by the way, has been an Italian minister that a few days ago, uh, the Italian minister of uh, emerging technology who had a brilliant idea of saying something like that. Uh, so the, the question I have for you is what do you think? Uh, how again can we help uh, new leaders, young leaders to emerge in this uh, system that uh, is not really viable as it is? And plus, as we heard from uh, previous speakers, uh, we have reached the limit. We have reached the limit of, uh, of uh, um, what we can afford in, in this planet, uh, the boundary limits, uh, as Schlosser said, uh, we went definitely beyond. So it's not a matter really of uh, conserving what we have. Uh, it's a problem of renewing 
what we have in order to uh, to make it sustainable or tenable at least.